welcome to the first Summerween vlog. I am so excited for this. It's my first time taking part in this readathon. And I've kind of wanted to do it for a few years now, but obviously now I have my book channels, so I definitely wanted to take part this year. But let's start talking you through my TBR books. Here are the two physical books and my Kindle book as well. Let's start with the prompt and then go from top to bottom basically. The reading prompt is just reading in the dark. The second is reading a thriller, which I chose Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This follows a socialite that her cousin just recently got married and moved to kind of a big manor in the countryside with her husband. And she sent, this cousin sends a message to Noemi, our main character, saying that she thinks she's being poisoned and she thinks she's in danger. And so Noemi decides to go investigate, see what's going on, try and help her cousin. It's not a very long book. I think it's going to be a relatively quick read, especially being a thriller slash mystery. And I can definitely read 300 pages in a day. I am quite sure I'm going to get through this really quickly. For the graphic novel prompt, I went with Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane is about Beetle, a 12 year old goblin witch who's caught in between. She's rather skipped being homeschooled completely and spend time with her best friend, Blob Ghost. But the mall is getting boring and Blob Ghost is cursed to haunt it, tethered there by some unseen force. And now Beetle's old best friend, Cat, is back in, back in town for a sorcery apprenticeship with her aunt, Hollowbone. Cat is everything Beetle wants to be, beautiful, cool, great at magic and kind of famous online. Beetle's quickly being left behind in the dust. But Cat's mentor has set her own vile scheme in motion. Blob Ghost doesn't escape them all soon, their afterlife might be coming to a very sticky end. Now Beetle has less than a week to rescue her best ghost, encourage Cat to stand up for herself and confront the magic she's been avoiding for far too long, and hopefully ride a broom without crashing. Just sounds fun and very Halloween-y. I mean, the town is called Aloes. The colors inside are just amazing. I'm so, the illustrations are beautiful. I'm so excited to get to this. I'm thinking of reading it maybe on Sunday morning. Moving on to the prompt that said, a book with orange and slash or black on the cover. I chose Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. You wouldn't be able to see it, but this cover is made of just orange and black. This book is the fifth in a mystery. Following Stevie Bell, she's accepted at this remote, very fancy school in the mountains for genius or extraordinary kids. And she's there to solve a mystery that happened at this school uh, decades ago. When she gets there, it's all very dark academia, mysterious. The atmosphere is on point. And when she gets there, things start happening while she's trying to solve this mystery as well. That mystery wraps up in the first trilogy, and then the fourth book is during the summer, when she goes to a summer camp to investigate another mystery. And now she's back at the school for her second year, and I guess mysterious things will happen again. Hopefully it still has those same dark academia mystery vibes that were just on point in the first three books. But we'll see. In the cover it says, when everyone lies, somebody dies. And yeah, there's going to be obviously another mystery to solve. And I'm excited to get to it. The fifth prompt was set in autumn. And obviously this not only has orange and black on the cover, but it's also set in autumn, so it fulfills two prompts. I do have two other books, they're Kindle books, that I 
kind of added as an extra in case I finish these. And I'm also in the middle of a book that actually has a lot of, I would say, summerween atmosphere, autumnal atmosphere, cozy fantasy. It's kind of also added to this CBR. But the extra ones are The Wicked Deep, The Inheritance Games, and A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. I am eight chapters into A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. Today I'm going to do a bit of almost prep for the whole week. I want to make these pumpkin cinnamon buns so that I can have for breakfast for the whole of Summerween week. And I also want to make a spiced honey that I can mix with my coffee every morning. But I wanna make those two things so I can have autumnal drinks an autumnal breakfast every day. And I thought it was perfect to finish listening to A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking while baking. And I'm really enjoying A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking up to this point. I think the main character and the writing style, kind of the way she speaks, she almost breaks the fourth wall is it's really funny and yeah I'm really enjoying that but yeah the plans for today are basically that bake and read but I do have a bit of work to do in the morning before actually starting that you know prep for summerween as well take some photos edit some photos create thumbnails for the videos coming out while I'm filming this at the end of the day I am hopefully going to start Nine Liars because I'm very excited to get to it. But for now, drink my coffee on my pumpkin mug, put my audiobook on and get started on that. And yes, I'm very excited for Summerween. Let's get into the vlog. Sorry for interrupting the baking. The cinnamon buns or the dough is now resting. So I thought I would stop listening to my audiobook and start on Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. So I'm just gonna sit here for a while, start reading this book, and then I'll go back to the cinnamon buns. I think it's going well. I mean, the dough looks pretty perfect. I was gonna do it by hand, but I have a Thermomix that has settings for making dough, so I thought I would, you know, use that. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say really, is just that I'm gonna be reading for a while, made myself a little snack back here, and I'm just gonna hunker down for an hour and a half, do some reading, then go back to baking.
I didn't end up being able to read that much. Buns are in the oven right now and the house is hot. The sun is streaming in as you can see and hopefully you can actually see me. But yes, I just wanted to give you an update. I read 8% of Nine Liars and I also finished A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking and I'm really, I had a really good day. <laughs> Reading A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking while baking has been so much fun. I think the way it was written and the humour of the main character, the personality and it all just makes the book very funny and comforting. Uh, everything's very relatable. So this book is inspired by, inspired in Italy I think. The city that the main character lives in is most definitely based in Venice and the way that the kind of the politics of this world are most definitely inspired by Venice and Italy. It's writing really good characters, very relatable and great characters with character development. The setting was good and the atmosphere was good. You know, the author took the time to explain how the city worked and what it looked like, how it felt, but didn't do it too much, so that was really good. The plot was interesting, but I was, just wasn't expecting this to go further than a mystery, so you kind of solve the mystery. So th this is something to keep in mind. The main mystery of this book is solved midway through, and then after that you go into something different, which I, I mean not different, just a continuation, but it escalates. It escalates, definitely. A lot more than what I was expecting, really. I, th I thought it was a really good book, especially in terms of the character development, I thought was really good. And I gave it four stars, which I think it's a solid rating. Now on to Nine Liars. This is reminding me of the first trilogy in this series. The first three books, every chapter was divided in two. The first part, you were in the past kind of jumping perspectives and learning from everyone involved in the initial mystery. And then the second part of the chapter, you were following Stevie and you always kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Obviously the chapters in the past are always smaller than the ones in the present. They're just kind of giving you hints, helping you solve the mystery while you're also watching Stevie do that. And this went back to that and actually. So I ran out of space on my card and I had to transfer it all to my computer, which took at least 20 minutes. And in that time, I read 10 more pages. And I was getting into how weirdly this is the perfect book for Summer Wing because past section of the book is set in, I think, end of June of 1992 or 3. And the present part is set in autumn so you have the summer vibes and you also have the autumnal vibes so it's merged together and it's perfect for summer wing all i want to say about the atmosphere it's amazing with the big buildings and ivy crawling and maureen johnson has such um has such a great way of describing things it really feels very immersive i love it now that the sun is still going down and it's half past eight, I will see you tomorrow.
morning. Welcome to the third day of Summerween. Yesterday I ended up not doing any updates on my reading. So today in the morning I got ready to go to work. But before I leave, I'm quickly just gonna give you an update on, on what I've been reading. For the past day or so, past day, I mostly read Nine Liars and Beetle and the Hollow Bones. And so, update. Nine Liars is going really well. I'm really liking the book. Just being able to be back with these characters is amazing. Stevie did just make a decision that really annoyed me. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how that's gonna play out. But I wouldn't wanna be her friend at that moment. The mystery is intriguing, actually. Uh, it's one of those kind of everyone's in a manor house, a person dies who killed them. They kind of think it was a robbery gone wrong because one of them did see something. It is called Nine Liars, so there's definitely some lies going on in there and we're slowly going to sift through them and see uh, which of them actually did the murdering because let's be honest we don't believe that it was a robbery gone wrong. You don't believe any of them could have been capable of this. Yeah I'll just continue reading to get to the bottom of it but I am curious and I want to get to it. The timeline of Stevie and their friends it's not super exciting. Stevie is not having the best time as of late and I kind of just want her to be happy and she doesn't seem to be very happy. I think I'm more intrigued by the mystery itself than what's going on with Stevie. But yes, really enjoying it. I feel like this was just so discombobulated. I will hopefully sort through my thoughts I'll give you an actual good run through of what I thought about this book but obviously I'm only 56% in so I still have a bit classic kind of graphic novel things are happening from page one I have to say they're doing a good job at presenting you the character while stuff is going on I'm enjoying it, not much to say, it's fun, it's definitely super Halloween-y and perfect, perfect for Halloween, or in this case Summerween. I should probably get a move on, as you can see, even after a coffee I'm still just kind of zombie because I did stay up late reading and I woke up early to be able to um, read in the morning, have some breakfast, do the full thing. This is it. Great update. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the end of the vlog. I really enjoyed Nine Liars. I took a few notes because I was struggling to really know how I felt about this book. Obviously this was a mystery so you always have that kind of suspense element. I really care about these characters. I think they're just so relatable but also kind of unattainable. They're all very much geniuses. Two elements that make me love this series is obviously the characters as I have just talked about them. Also the atmosphere and the setting. Ellingham Boarding School has such immaculate dark academia vibes. It's amazing. And this book started there. But then he moved to London, modern London, which had a bit less of that dark academia atmosphere, but it did, the descriptions were great. It felt like you were in London. But the other chapters, going back in time, Time, they were set in this manor house with a sprawling estate. I thought plot was intriguing. Classic story where you have a group of people that go to this remote place, normally a fancy manor, and something happens in the night and they find the 
dead people actually really enjoyed because the whole thing is the vibes i never thought this series was brilliant i thought it was good especially because of the characters and the atmosphere if you take one of those away it loses a bit of its interest so i enjoyed that this book did have a change in setting but it brought the atmosphere with it the mystery was good but at the end it didn't feel surprising. I mean, if it was a Cluedo game, I probably would have chosen that person as the murderer. And it definitely, it was that person. That was kind of all I had to, I had to say. I have read a thousand pages and I read A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, finished Nine Liars as well, read half of Beetle and the Hollow Bones and started the Inheritance Games. So that's four books, two of them finished, two, one I'm in the middle of, the other I have just started. I've also been reading The Daughter of the Moon Goddess, which is also at kind of like the start. So actually those are five books and I still have another book of my Essential TBR to read which is Mexican Gothic. And yeah, I hope to see you here in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye.